Well, welcome to St. Nicholas Church here in Checkley for the service of the third Sunday after Trinity. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. As we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and sent the Spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boats were there with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This incident comes from the beginning of Jesus' ministry, or at least the the first year or so of Jesus' ministry, and he is at a point where he is in and around the Sea of Galilee, and he is popular. People are coming to him. People are listening to his teaching. People, uh, we've already seen in this gospel towards the beginning of it, people understand that he speaks with great authority, such as the scribes and the Pharisees don't possess. He's a popular person. And so at times he, he wishes to get away from the crowds. He wishes to get away with his disciples. And this is one such incident And so he gets into a boat with them with the purpose that they will go somewhere else. As he said to them, 
Let us go across to the other side. And a great storm breaks out, as can often happen in the Sea of Galilee. I am told that the, the geography of the area is such that winds can whip down quite quickly and storms can be whipped up quite quickly. And that is clearly what has happened here. And water is beginning to fill the boat. This is an alarming state. This is an alarming time. Everything is running around. And, and remember, these are people that know their craft. They're a fisherman amongst these disciples. And they, although they spend their working life on the water, they too are afraid, they too are struggling. And in the midst of this, Mark tells us, not only is Jesus in the stern of the boat asleep, but moreover, Mark tells us, and he was asleep on a cushion. You can't have, surely, a picture of more serenity in the midst of great turmoil and wind and storm and waves and panicking disciples, there is Jesus asleep on a cushion. And so they wake him up and say to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Now the point is, the irony in the question is, of course, that Jesus knew that they were not perishing. It's not that Jesus didn't care, it's that Jesus had peace because he knew the mission on which his father had sent him and he knew that his time was not yet come. He knew he was safe. What's more, he as Lord of all creation understood the situation and so he could be asleep on the cushion, but they didn't know that, only he knew that. And so he awoke and he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was great calm, and he said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? It's an extraordinary account, this. We know, because we read this elsewhere, in not only the other Gospels, but also in the Epistles, that all things were created through Jesus. All things were made through him, and not through him was anything made that was made. Everything was made through him. So we know that, but they don't know that. But Jesus demonstrates that. He speaks to the sea and says, be still, and it is still. In the Jewish imagination, seas were places of great chaos. Seas were places where great wild beasties dwelt. Seas were seen as places almost of a kind of quasi-evil. Yet Jesus has mastery over it, speaks, and it is still. Then he says to the disciples, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And then ironically, we read that actually, and they were filled with great fear and said to one another, who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? When they saw what Jesus did, they were actually even more afraid. It was bad enough to be on the sea. It was bad enough to have the storm whipped up around them. It was bad enough to have the water filling, sorry, the boat filling with water. But to have Jesus stand up and say to the storm, be still, and it is still, that is even more terrifying yet than all of that. And they ask themselves the question, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? I could go on. I could say other things. But actually, that question, it seems to me, is the place to stop. That question, it seems to me, is a question for you to play over in your own minds. Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us pray. We pray for the Church of God. And as we read of the account of the calming of the storm, we pray for those Christians who live in places of great turmoil, places of persecution, places where people are beginning to turn against them. We pray that they may know the peace of Christ. And as we live in a society becoming increasingly post-Christian, we pray that you strengthen us as we begin to feel the storm's buffet. Be merciful, O Father of all mercies, to your church universal, dispersed throughout the whole world, that all your faithful people may have grace to confess your holy name, and especially be merciful to such as are under persecution for their testimony and their profession of the gospel, that as they stand fast for your holy word, so they may be upheld by it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all nations and for those who are in authority. We pray that you would inspire those who lead the nations, that you would grant success to those who seek to build peace between and within nations. Almighty God, who alone gives wisdom and understanding, inspire, we pray, the minds of all to whom you have committed the government of the nations of the world. Give them the vision of truth and justice, that by their counsels all races and classes may work together as one, and your church throughout the world may serve you in freedom and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the parishes where we live and our friends, our families, our neighbours, praying for all who serve our local communities. O God, who gathers your children together, that they may prepare a city for habitation and dwell together in unity, we pray for all who bear authority in our cities, our towns and our parishes, for local government officers and all who give their time and energy in caring for the common good. Grant them to plan and work for your glory and the delight of all. And continue to raise up, we pray, men and women who offer service to the community as a vocation from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who are sick, anxious or infirm. And we pray in a moment of quiet for those in our hearts. O oh, Heavenly Father, look in your compassion on those in need, especially on those for whom our prayers are desired. Grant them the comfort of your presence. Let your peace rule in their hearts and fulfil in them your perfect will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we remember those who have died, those who mourn their passing, and we pray, Lord, that you may be their comfort. God of all grace, who sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light, most humbly and heartily we give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his glorious resurrection open the kingdom of heaven to all who believe. Grant us assuredly to know that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come shall be able to separate us from your love which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. And the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Oh, hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him. Crown him, crown him, crown him, Lord of all. Crown him, ye morning.
Morning stars of light who fix this floating ball. Now hail the strength of Israel's might and crown him, crown him, crown him, crown him, Lord of all. Crown him, ye martyrs of your God, who from his altar call. Extol the stem of Jesse's rod, and crown him, crown him, crown him, crown him, Lord of all. Ye seed of Israel, chosen race, ye ransomed of the fall. Hail him who saves you by his grace, and crown him, crown him, crown him, crown him, Lord of all. Sinners whose love can never forget the wormwood and the Spread your trophies at his feet and crown him, crown him, crown him, crown him, Lord of all. Let every tribe and every tongue before him prostrate fall. And shout in universal song the crowned, 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 crowned Lord of all. Yours, Lord, is the graceness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here, his Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord, and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh, as your son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name for ever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. 
Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Saint Nicholas and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our unrighteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. And the blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. O God, whose beauty is beyond our imagining and whose power we cannot comprehend, show us your glory as far as we can grasp it and shield us from knowing more than we can bear until we may look upon you without fear through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Glorious Great.
God, who from the death of sin raised you to new life in Christ, keep you from falling and set you in the presence of his glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>